in 10 minutes. Yep. Thank you very much for, for this opportunity. Um, global education in Poland um, is important element. I would say it's part of the history of Poland. Think about that in the, that way. Um, 31 years ago, we used to be world champions on protests. 31 years ago, uh, the world champions to say no to the government were not on the Tahrir Square, were on, on the Polish shipyard in Gdańsk. This is where solidarity was started. And there were people who said, no, we are against. And then, and saying frankly 10 years later, they understood, we understood, that it's not enough to be against, that we should take the responsibility. And we started to take the responsibility for the local communities, for all the state, and then, a few years later, we became the member of the EU, and today, as a presidency, today, uh, as a, one of the donors in the global development cooperation, Poland is taking respons responsibility or participating in responsibility also on the European level and on the uh, level uh, when we are thinking in worldwide sense. Somehow this is the story of global education, of understanding that not, it's not enough to protest, it's not enough to take responsibility for the local community, but that we need to uh, go beyond existing borders. And when we are thinking about what for is the global education, when we are talking about Poland, for sure uh, the final goal is to involve citizens, to have well-prepared, well-educated citizens who can take responsibility who can, and who can be active in the uh, in direct, directly involved in development cooperation. For sure, they should understand the global development challenges. They should have access to uh, quality global education. And this is something what changed in the last few years. Uh, global education was brought, like all the civic education, to the Polish formal educational system by non-government organization. As one of the leaders of uh, NGOs in Poland, I used to teach administration first that civic education is something which should be uh, introduced into the core curricula. Finally, that the global education should be part of that. And non-government organization in Poland succeed first to bring global education into core curricula. This is the obligatory part of educational in, education in Poland on every level of education. Um, finally, uh, it became important part of uh, in-service teacher training, preparation of teachers. Uh, what is important in this process that NGOs were not excluded in the result of formalization of the global education. That means an important part that what is happening in the classroom is done, it's implemented in the cooperation between teacher and non-governmental organizations. And this is something what we found crucial to keep involvement of non-governmental organizations in, in the school activities. Um, I would like to say Again, thank you for the peer review uh, Jean done for us. That means several countries which were looking for the process we did. Uh, it was very important uh, support for us. At this moment, in last academic year, we have postgraduate academic programs for teachers on global education. And finally, uh, about 
10, 10 days ago, um, for the first time, uh, Poland has a legal act, the Bill on Development Cooperation, which includes global education as important part of the, uh, of, 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 of the program. Uh, we should think about the main actors. Again, non-governmental organizations are in the center, but we have reasonable cooperation between um, the Ministry of National Education, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as well as Ministry of Science and, and Higher Education. And the um, process of dialogue between these part partners uh, was crucial to, to develop uh, our own strategy. Very important tool for Ministry of Foreign Affairs is a tool, uh, is a grant competition, the joint grant um, call for proposals, which is led by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of National Education, Ministry of Science and Higher Education. And what's important? It's both for teachers, for schools, um, directly for the pupils, for students, but also for media and non-government organizations. Media are important in communicating both to the um, community, to the society, as well to teachers. Uh, and it's very important to, to have reasonable coverage of that what's happening worldwide from the perspective of, of, of the global education. The important moment for the um, development of uh, global education in Poland was signing the Memorandum of, of, of Understanding between Minister of National Education, Minister of Foreign Affairs, as well as the platform uh, the Granica Group, a broad group, the coalition of Polish NGOs is working internationally. Mm, uh, the Memorandum of Understanding, uh, which is including both definitions, but also agreement about the ways we will cooperate. When we are thinking about global education, we should ask a question. What's the difference between development cooperation of European Union and China, Russia, Turkey, Brazil? Do we see any difference? I see at least one. It's global education. Understanding that Russia just a few, few days ago established developed agency, knowing Russia and working there, I'm not sure how far they go with global education. This is somehow uh, something what we develop in Europe. This is something unique that we believe that we should not only invest in the South, support them in the economical sense, support the development. But somehow we should help them to empower local communities, to be sure that people can decide about themselves and that we need uh, understanding of that what we are doing, not only in big business, but first of all among citizens. And this is what uh, global education is. And for sure, this lab label to be involved in empowering people, in supporting development, not just in charity, not just in humanitarian aid, uh, is something what's building European citizenship. And saying, frankly, I seen that in the DAP when I was a uh, few weeks ago with Commissioner Georgieva. Unfortunately, there was something which was missed there. It was EU logo. It was EU flag. Uh, being there for around all the day, we've seen EU flag once. 
That means that we are not visible there. Very often we, European Union, are criticized that we are not helping enough. But at the same moment, we are not passing the message to them what we did, but also this message is not delivered to our citizens that we can be proud to, the, to do something that's really important. Probably the next step, they will question what should be the next step. The first uh, element of, of next step should be issue, can we discuss among member states more educational issues? Can be the debate on global education, civic education, the first area where we can talk together about some standards? If we cannot, I was talking about that a moment ago, is the innovative financial instrument we have in Poland, like in Czech Republic and Hungary. It's one percent law. This law gives the citizen, the taxpayer, the right to redirect one percent of her or his taxes. It's public support. It is a public money. It is a tax, ta tax money. An important part of this money is going to organizations like People in Need in Czech Republic, a Polish humanitarian organization in Poland, NGOs which are on behalf of the citizens, not through the decision of the politicians, but through the choice of the citizens. They are working in the global south, uh, helping in, in real development. Thank you very much.